AQA A-Level Physics. This is for the medical physics option. And this video is about the structure of the eye. So most of this is GCSE revision, okay? These are the main bits of the eye that we need to know. There's one or two others which I'll come to later in the video. But uh, light passes through the cornea. So the cornea at the front of the eye is this transparent, tough layer, uh, a clear dome shaped surface that protects the eye and it starts to focus the light. It actually does more focusing than the lens does. Uh, the iris and the pupil. So the iris is the colored part of the eye uh, and that has a hole in the middle of the pupil and uh, the iris controls the size of the pupil. The pupil is the aperture, in other words, the hole that light enters through. So the iris controls the amount of light entering the eye. Uh, the lens continues to focus the light and it produces an image on the retina. Uh, the lens can change shape uh, and that changes its focal length and that's called accommodation. Uh, I believe we're going to talk a lot about that in the next video. The retina uh, is a light sensitive tissue at the back of the eye. So lots and lots of cells and these special cells are called photoreceptors and they change light energy into an electrical signal. And there are two types which are called rods and cones. Uh, the optic nerve, uh, so all of the nerve fibers from all of the cells come together and you end up with millions of nerve fibers going to the brain through the optic nerve. Uh, the fovea or the yellow spot, uh, a small region of closely packed cones and it provides the sharpest vision. If you actually look at something, then the image of the thing that you are looking at is on the fovea. Everything else is on the around surrounding the fovea. So rods and cones. Let's talk about rods first. There's about 20 times more rods than cones. Uh, rods function at low light intensities with very little detail. So just basically uh, gray, shades of gray in gray scale, very, very little detail. Uh, rods are not sensitive to color. Um, several rods may send a signal to a single nerve fiber. If you look on this, this diagram here, uh, here we've got three rods and they're all sending a signal to the same nerve fiber. Whereas the cones all have their own nerve fiber. Uh, cones are sensitive to high intensity light. Uh, each cone is connected to a single nerve fiber. Uh, cones are sensitive to different wavelengths of light. Now, visible light, uh, you will know, is from about 380 to about 760 nanometers. Now, this, it, there are different theories as to how the cones actually work. Uh, I think, I believe the current theory is that there are red, and green and blue cones. So different cones are sensitive to red, green and blue and are sensitive to the intensity of red, green and blue. Uh, and with those, you can actually make up any color. Um, that's probably how they work. Uh, the fovea or yellow spot is a region of close packed cones. Now rods. Uh, rods and cones, they're a bit like photoelectric cells. So light falls on them and they produce electricity, an EMF. Now rods contain something called visual purple, a chemical called visual purple. Cones don't, cones don't have visual purple. Now what happens is that light causes it to bleach. So it loses its color, it loses its purpleness. And in that chemical reaction, it produces an EMF. And then enzymes get to work and they reverse the bleaching so that the rod is used again. Yes, it's regenerated. Now, at low light intensities, when it's very dark, uh, there's more reversal than there is bleaching. Therefore, uh, the rods have lots more visual purple at low light intensities. So the rods are more sensitive at low light intensities. 
but it takes time to regenerate all of this visual purple takes up to 45 minutes and that's called dark adjustment if you're doing astronomy and you're going to go out and look at the stars then it's going to take maybe up to 45 minutes for your eyes to get used to the dark after 45 minutes you'll see lots lots more stars the stars that you will see everything you will see will nearly all be just black and white why because you're just using your rods and not your cones because it's low light intensity if you take a photograph of the stars you'll see that the stars are actually lots of different colors but at low light intensities you'll just see black and white uh, but it will take you about 45 minutes to regenerate all of this visual purple and that's called dark adjustment uh, the graph look at the graph might come up in the exam and it's the distribution on the retina of the rods and the cones if we actually look at the numbers there so uh, for the cones in the fovea that's 160,000 uh, cells per millimeter squared that's a lot of cells in a tiny little area so that's the fovea which is just cones uh, and then notice the number of rods uh, shoots up and then goes down extending right to kind of 70 80 degrees okay look notice the blind spot and that's where the optic nerve is so there aren't any receptors there uh, the fovea is a small region of closely packed cones and that provides the sharpest vision uh, if you actually see it on a retina it looks yellow uh, the blind spot is where all the nerves converge and form the optic nerve now spatial resolution um, the resolving power in astronomy the resolving power of an optical instrument is its ability to distinguish between two points so if you're looking at uh, two stars if the angle between them is very 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 small then you only see one star because you can't distinguish between them so your resolving power is usually given as an angle and it's the smallest angle that you can tell two points apart in this context they have different ways of expressing it it's expressed as an angle or line pairs per degree 60 line pairs in one degree you can tell them apart um, that is equivalent to if you look at this diagram from 25 centimeters away you can tell apart two points which are 0.07 millimeters apart if they were two points were closer together you wouldn't be able to resolve them you wouldn't be able to tell them apart okay so that is spatial resolution that's called now one of the factors which will affect spatial resolution is how close together the light receptors are so for two points to be resolved and it's pretty obvious really that the the light must fall on the retina uh, and in between the image of the two points there needs to be a gap so you must have at least one unbleached rod or a cone between them if we look at these diagrams here there there isn't a gap between them here between these two points now here there must either be a cone or an unbleached rod and then the rods if we're talking rods they mustn't share the same nerve because then they'll just be sending the same signal basically okay in the next video we'll look at light uh, the eye as an optical instrument that should be fun